Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Uh, this is Uncle Shorty with Uncle Shorty's Bassin. Uh, today we're going to be doing a D65 crankbait. Um, we're going to be doing it in a rainbow trout pattern. Um, I've been kind of messing around with a few other styles of baits uh, in this pattern lately, and I'm I'm kind of digging the way that they're coming out. I've kind of done a couple different a couple different ways so this right here is a uh, it's more of a wake bait style but so a little bit a little bit brighter of a of a trout pattern um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to throwing this one this thing's gonna be awesome on the top um, and then a little bit a little bit darker of a of a swim bait this one is, is not a top water it's just more of a glide bait um, we can kind of see the differences in the colorings same kind of concept um, but different so we're gonna do this crankbait and you know kind of a mixture of both of these these styles of colorings so I already got the, the bill taped off here and covered it in white you guys don't need to see that um, and then we're going to be throwing some wicked aluminum just a light coat on the kind of the top half just a little bit of a of a gray coloring it's just going to be kind of a not really going to see this but just gives it a little bit of a starting base here rather than white thick coat just on the top half kind of here up kind of fade it down a little bit the way I fade it down is kind of hold my airbrush at a little bit of an angle as I'm going down and that will kind of you know spray downwards to get that that fade so it's not a hard line Get that heat set and then uh, we'll get back to you all right so now that we got that heat set uh, I'm gonna start off with the, the pink stripe down the middle here I've kind of messed with different colors and and uh, I think I kind of came up with a mixture of two paints that I like um, I really like this it, it's a folk art paint so you do have to reduce it you know quite a bit uh, it's kind of thick but it's a color shifting paint uh, this is uh, pink flash and then I just mix that with some uh, wicked wicked opaque white um, so we're gonna get that mixed together here and get that pink stripe oh, just broke my mixing cup All right, we don't need too much here because we're just going going that stripe right down the middle um, we don't want it to be too thin we don't want it to be too thick of a line so I keep my pressure down low and just you know a few different passes is good um, start in the back here nice and slow I like to follow that middle line. Usually these, these baits will have a line going down the middle there. So I like to follow that. Make it a little bit thicker than what the line is. Flip it over, do the same to this side. Remember, you can't go wrong with these baits. You can always go back and fix them if you need to. You know, change some colors. You know, just kind of do what you guys do what you guys think uh, works with the you know the 
colors of the fish in your area. All right, so we got that set. Um, now we're gonna move on to a different color. Okay, so now we're gonna throw some detail moss green. Uh, we're actually gonna use this one a couple different times today. So we're just gonna add a few drops. Uh, we're gonna throw just kind of a starting base over the top and on the shoulders here. Uh, just like I said, we're gonna do this a few different times uh, in between colors. So right here, I'm just gonna go nice and light. If you look at rainbow trouts, you know, they're kind of dark on the top. Uh, but after doing this, we're going to be, you know, throwing in some, some blues and some purples. Just kind of as a little background. Because they're, you know, you got multiple different colors in them. And they're a lot darker than, than you would think. So we're just going to do a nice starting base here. Some green, some moss green. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna heat set that and then we'll move on to some blue. Okay, so now we got some Caribbean blue here. We're just gonna do just light. I'm gonna kind of hold my airbrush away from the bay a little bit and just kind of a light, light, you know, coating over all of this. Um, we, we, we kind of want at the end this pink to be kind of a, a dull kind of back behind the other color. We don't want it to be so bright and bah, in your face. Uh, if you kind of look at these. You know, that pink is, you know, hopefully you guys can see that. It's kind of faded behind the other colors. It's not just, you know, this one's a little bit more, you know, you can kind of see it a little bit more, but it's still back behind, you know, multiple other colors. Um, we don't want it to be bam right in your face. So we're going to do some layering. Um, you know, hold this blue kind of just back. And just kind of coat the bait front to back you can kind of see that a little bit a little bit of blue you can throw some on the top you know nothing you do is wrong here hold this back kind of get the bottom a little bit okay I'll clean this up real quick and just throw some uh, what is this some violet oh. Yeah, some pearl, pearl plum. We're going to throw some pearl plum on it. Without heat setting. We're just going to do it all, all at once, which is fine. Right, a couple drops of pearl plum. Same thing, kind of hold it back. back a little bit on the top here on the shoulders all right I'm gonna heat set this while my compressor is filling up okay so now we're gonna come in I, I took the same mixture of uh, pink that I have for the, the line down the middle here and I just added a little bit of red to it uh, just kind of give me a little bit brighter of a, a little bit different color here because we're gonna add some here to the I guess you'd call it like the cheek here I don't know the cheek of the of the bait we're just gonna just lightly put some on there it looks almost the same as the there's a stripe, but it's a little bit different. A little bit, a little bit brighter. Flip it over and do the same to this side. Okay. All right, now we're gonna grab some sepia. Kind of cut, coat the whole bait. Um, and then we're going to grab some more of the detail moss green and go over the top. So let's get the sepia ready. 
Now sitting out here, you know, I spray in my garage. Uh, up here in the up here in Washington, it's, it's already getting cold, so my paints like to set up, and so I gotta really make sure I shake them real well before I use them. But like I said before, in my other videos, if you haven't seen those, go check them out. Um, layering, layering is a big part of airbrushing these baits. Uh, so we're just going to kind of throw a light, a light coat from a distance. And this sepia is is awesome. We're going to do because we want at the end here we want this back be dark real dark and then it's just gonna kind of take some of these some of these colors and just dull them down a little bit but enough to where you can still see the blue and the purple coming through Okay, let me get this heat set and then we're going to move on to some more colors. Okay, so now that we got all that heat set, we're going to come back to the, the moss green. And we're going to darken up the back here. Um, we're just going to keep doing this in layers, like I said. Um, yeah, out here in Washington, we got a lot of lakes with a lot of rainbow trout in them, so... It's always a good pattern to be throwing. Nice and slow, darken this up. What's good about this detailed moss green is it's not just a a solid dark green. You can you can kind of see through it, which is kind of nice, kind of transparent. Work these shoulders. Make sure you get the face here. Darken that uh, in the eyes. Oh, got a little splatter there. Let me get a key to get that. Alright. Whenever I'm doing the shoulders, I always aim down so it fades down into the other colors. kind of give the whole thing a little coat you know with these baits I just kind of as I'm going make little adjustments you know add colors where I think they might need them and uh, that's why no baits are ever the same which is why I love doing this I know I've said it before in other videos but that's why I like doing it nobody else is gonna have this color have this pattern out there on the lakes. Alright, so I'm thinking about maybe adding a little fin in there. Kind of like this bait has a fin. This one, this bait came with one. You can see it already has one. On this one, I added a fin. I used this right here from Insane Custom uh, Stencils. I just cut that off of the, the fin wheel insane custom stencils they have all kinds of amazing things there so i just cut one off you know you can use it they have multiple different sizes shapes this one right here i kind of like to use on a lot of my baits so i just cut that off the wheel so it's easier to use hold it on there and uh go from there you know it's you can kind of go around and see which one you think might might fit best on your bait you know, they got a bunch of different sizes. They got different things you can use, you know, for the gill. They got to go check them out. They got a bunch of, bunch of awesome things there. You can use, you know, this part right here for something. You know, you just got to use your imagination right here. Maybe for a craw. If we were doing a craw, we can use this outline. You know, they just got a bunch of different things. You know, you can, it's endless. So, I think I might... 
think I might add a fin right here just to give this bait a little something oops a little something different yes yeah, so let me heat set this before I start putting my hands all over it and, and then we'll add a little fin okay so we got that heat set now we're gonna come out here and throw this fin on it so what I did was I mixed uh, some dark gray and some wicked opaque white uh, uh, <clears throat> instead of going with a, a black sometimes I like to go with just different colors uh, this one what we're gonna do is we're gonna go lightly with the gray and then later on we're gonna come in with just a, a paintbrush a little thin paintbrush and just do some some colors on top of it uh, so this is just gonna be a starting point uh, for us to do here uh, we don't want to cover the the line here so I'm trying to figure out where it would be a good place so I think I'm just gonna kind of go off the point of the gill here so find that point and just kind of come back a little bit it doesn't have to be exact but that way it's somewhat similar on the other side uh, we're just gonna go lightly you might not be able to see this we take it off okay kind of you can kind of see that uh, but what's gonna make it pop is later when we come in with the other colors with the paintbrush that's when it's going to really pop so let me get that heat set that way we don't have any uh, we don't want to have any runs so I just want to make sure I get that heat set So now we got that one done we're gonna flip this over we're gonna do the same thing on this side let's get this kind of set up get the stencil wiped off all right now we're gonna use this same same stencil that we just used we're just gonna all you gotta do is flip it over we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we'll find that point. All right. You go ahead and kind of see that. Right, let me get that. Let me get that one dried up and move on all right so looking at this bait here uh kind of think about what i want to do do next uh i really want to darken this up up top here um a little bit on the side so what i'm gonna do and you know you know rainbow trots they got you know a lot of beautiful colors uh, a lot of purples blues you know they're pretty shiny um so i'm gonna come in with this wicked purple it's just a straight dark purple uh, we're just going to throw some on the top, a little bit on the sides, just to kind of give it a little bit darker. We'll come back over again with the moss green, uh, but I just really want to darken that up. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done this on my other baits that I showed you guys, but like I said, I don't like to do the same thing over and over on my bait. So I like to try, you know, messing around, doing different things. So we're just going to throw, boom. All right, yeah, sorry about that. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it's having some technical difficulties. All right, so like I said, what we're doing is we're going to throw some dark uh, purple onto the top here. Uh, just, just to kind of darken this up with some, with some purple so it has some kind of reflection of purple. Uh, not too crazy on the sides here, but just kind of the tops. A little bit on the face here. And then we'll come back with that detailed moss green and kind of just <clears throat> overlay all of it. Um, then we're going to get into some like detail work with some paint brushes. We're going to add the dots. And we'll do uh, all of that and then we'll add the eyes and clear coat it. Um, yeah, we'll add a little bit of some color right here onto those fins just to kind of make those stand out and pop. You know, those are kind of like an orangey 
you know, orange, pink color. If you look at any pictures, um, you know, or if you, you know, caught any kind of trout, uh, if you look at their fins, they're kind of a fleshy tone, shiny, fleshy tone color, if that's such a thing. <laughs> um, all right, detail moss green. Here we go. Detail moss green. Add a couple drops. And that purple will stand out through all that. Come down the shoulders. Okay, dark's looking a little bit darker like I wanted it to. Like I said, I wanted it to be a little bit different than my other patterns. You know, this was the this was the first one that I did, first trout pattern that I ever painted. Um, I liked it, a little bit lighter color. This was the second one, you know, a little bit darker. Um, but still, you know, still see the colors in there. So this one's kind of the mixture of the first one and the second one. A little bit lighter colors, a little bit darker on the top. Um, so now we're going to come in and add. And if you notice on both of these ones, you know, I added, I just took some little paintbrush, added some red around the gills. So I'll probably do that on this as well. Uh, just a little bit of red, just kind of highlight some, some gills. Um, this one had some more fins on it. Obviously, the crankbait doesn't, but you can kind of highlight those. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do here. Let me get my paintbrush. And then, where did that, where did that go? If I can find my, I need to organize my paint bench here a little bit. This drives me crazy. I know it's here somewhere. Alright, well, let me find it. There it is. I like this blood red stuff here. It's candy. It's auto air colors. Candy. Y2O. Uh, this is blood red. And I usually add this stuff when I'm painting um, other crankbaits. I'll paint it uh, just underneath the bill. You know, kind of like in this area. I'll put, I'll put it um, so I'm just adding a little bit into a, a cup. You can get these little cups. I bought these at uh, the dollar store. They're actually sold as, as shot cups, but I don't drink, so they're perfect for little paint mixing cups. They were a dollar. You get 24 of them. So I bought a few packs. They're perfect little mixing cups. So I use this blood red. Just dip a little bit, and then, um. Let's see, kind of see where we want to paint these gills. We'll do some lines. No, I'm no artist at all. As you can tell, I got shaky hands. But, you know, you kind of make uh, where you think you might want to add some doesn't have to be perfect so we'll add some there maybe a little bit underneath just to put some color on the bottom for those fish that are sitting down low um, I'm gonna do the same thing to this side A little bit of this stuff goes a long way, as you can tell. Nothing, 
Nothing beats blood for fish. They love blood. Alright, just a little bit of there. Just a little something to kind of add some color to the front of the bait. And you can always go crazy and kind of come up in here and paint all these gills that they have around, but we'll just keep it simple. Go on the bottom there. Let me, uh, let me get that heat set and then we'll paint these fins. Alright, so I got some Canyon Orange uh, mixed out with some white and a little bit of Wicked Gold. Kind of came up with a little bit of a mixture here. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to stand out but not too much. And we're just going to add just some little detail, some little lines on the fins here. And just a little something. I know it looks a little, a little goofy, but it'll all kind of blend away once we, once we finish spraying. Um, it's just going to add a little texture to their, to their fin here. All right, so the last thing I like to do uh, before I put the dots on, um, you know, we like to cover the cover the bait in dots or spots, um, is I come in with some Wicked Gold. Um, you notice Wicked Gold has a lot of sparkle in it, um, and so do Rainbow Trout. Now we're just gonna do we're gonna kind of spray away from our bait. We're just gonna coat it. It's gonna give it a nice a nice shine on the top. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that um, or not. We'll really coat the top, get the sides and the bottom. The sides over here. Uh, it, add, it adds it, adds some good shine to the bait without changing the color. Should we get the face? Now you can use it to darken up your bait if you want. Really add a good amount of this. Um, but I don't think we need to darken it up anymore. We got some good, good colorings there. Fin turned out alright. Alright, so I'm going to heat set that. I'm going to get the eyes on. And then I'll show you guys how I do some of the spots. I won't show you all the spots because that will get, that'll get boring real quick. Um... And then I'll show you the final product. Okay, so let me show you guys what I did here. Uh, never, never tried this before, but I wanted to get a red eye. Uh, I can only find this style of eye in either this silver color or, um, or like this gold. Right? I can only find it in this, these two different colors. Um, so what I did was. I took the silver one and I put it on a piece of plastic that I have and I took that candy red um, and just did a light coat over the silver one uh, I did that and then I wiped the, the black part I wiped the red off of that black part and then so now I got the red eyes that I was looking for um, they seem like they turned out exactly how I wanted them so let's pop these on we're in. Okay, if I can. Sorry about that. Got stuck on me there. Try this again. Oh boy. Normally, I don't have this much trouble. Fighting me. There we go. 
Yeah, I like that. I like the way that turned out. I'll remember that for down the road if I want to try some other different colors. I mean, I got plenty of colored eyes, but sometimes there's that one color eye that you might be looking for that you might not have. And you can just paint it. Don't go crazy thick with it, just a nice thin, nice thin coat. Oh boy. Alright. Alright, so now we got those eyes to kind of stay there. They're kind of fighting me for some reason. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to do the spots. So I'll show you guys a little bit and then I'll cut the video and finish it off. So what I did was mix some, uh, some dark purple and some pearl black into a little cup here. You can kind of see that. I don't know if you can or not. But it's kind of a dark, dark, dark purple. Um... And we're just going to take the little of our fine paintbrush here. And there's no specific pattern that it has to be in. But we're just going to be taking, taking dots. Get your hand steady so you don't do lines. And we're just going to be adding dots. Dip your brush. This part kind of takes a while and is tedious, but if you do look at trout, they have a ton of spots all over them. So there's no too many or not enough or and you want it kind of to be sporadic. You know, you don't want it to be just like all the lines in a row or you know all in the same same spot so you just kind of throw your spots so, yeah, so I hope you guys have learned a little something off this video today um, like I said I'll, I'll continue doing this and come back and show you guys the the final product I'll throw some we're not going to use KBS today we're going to throw some two ton um, some Devcon two ton epoxy we're going to use that instead um, sometimes that KBS stuff can be a pain you know it is good to dip it and let it hang but you got to store it you know store it right or sometimes it cures up on you and I've been kind of having that problem lately so we're just gonna scrap that KBS I might go with some UV some UV stuff I don't know yeah I might I've been thinking about it UV light but uh I haven't really had time lately to build any kind of boxes or get a setup for that yet <clears throat> but yeah it was kind of a, a start of the dots so I'll finish this and then show you guys the final product. Alright, <clears throat> so there we go. So we got all the uh, spots put on. Next we're going to be doing some DEFCON two-part epoxy. So I got that mixed up in the cup here. I uh, got my, my brush all ready to add it. So let me just get it all mixed up. And... Uh, We'll start adding this two-part epoxy. Alright. Now this stuff uh, is a little tricky to work with. I'll just kind of show you guys a little bit. Um, i kind of just talk to you as I'm finishing the video. You know, this stuff is 30-minute epoxy. Uh, but it does seem to cure, you know, or set up a little bit faster than that. So you do got to work a little bit quicker. They have five minute epoxy. I have accidentally bought that before without realizing and started adding that onto a bait and it started setting up real fast. So make sure you're buying the 30 minute epoxy. And um, but this stuff is, is really good. It's easy to easy to put on. It uh, it dries super clear. You do gotta be careful of adding too much 
because you don't want to get any drips or anything like that. Um, there are little tricks that if it starts to kind of set up or cure on you before you're ready, you can, you know, use your dryer, your hair dryer, you know, that you use for setting up um, or heat setting. You can kind of use that to just add a little bit of heat to the to the mix, and that will kind of you know that'll buy you an extra minute or so. You know, just to kind of make finish finish the bait, or you know maybe you gotta you know do one little section. You know, you can just because when it's colder out like this, this stuff seems to set up a lot faster, which isn't good, but. I haven't had a bait give me any problems yet, even though it's, sometimes it's a hassle putting it on or spreading it. But you can kind of see the difference. Um, from here to back here, I mean, that's, it's like night and day. This stuff is, this stuff's really good once you can get it on. Don't give up on it because it's giving you, you know, problems, but. So yeah, so I'll finish getting this bait on. And then, um. You know, I'll, I'll you know, maybe show you guys the final, but maybe not. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, so yeah, go check out my other videos if you haven't already. Um, Uncle Shorty's Bassin. Um, like I said, I get a lot of my baits here at Backwater Outfitting and Dinger Baits. You know, I'll put some links in the description to those places. Um, you can also get the stencils. That I've used at Insane Custom Stencils. I'll also put that in the description. I mean, I don't get nothing from them. I'm just telling you guys what I like to use. Um, actually, my buddy, that guy Skimpy. I don't know if you guys have checked out his videos. That guy, that guy can make some baits. He makes all kinds of baits. Um, you know, jig heads. He makes spinner baits, chatter baits, spinner baits. Um, he makes he makes everything and he'll walk you through step by step he does a lot of do it mold videos how to's uh, he actually just made he made a video uh, showing how to make a bunch of stencils uh, for me to use in one of my one of my videos so I still haven't had a chance to hook up with him yet just because of, of life um, working and you know and hit him and him working you know we all got family still um, but yeah go check out his videos and you'll uh you know like I said he's got that he walks through step by step making stencils off the computer I forget the name of that that machine he uses uh, oh uh, collab I think or uh, I mean I can't think of the name of it so I apologize for that skimp uh, but yeah go check out that guy skimpy um, and, uh, and yeah, you guys will enjoy his videos. All right, well, this is Uncle Shorty with Uncle Shorty's Bassin. I'm just gonna finish this up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned a little something. Uh, I know it's a little lengthy videos, but I like uh, you know when I watch when I watch these videos, you know I enjoy watching step by step. You know, not just a quick two minute video. I wanna. I want to know colors. I want to know what you're doing, how you're doing it. I might not use the same exact colors as them, but I want to get an idea so I can make, you know, use my own colors for that pattern or whatever. So, so yeah. So let me let me know, in the, you know, in the description if there's anything, any questions you guys might have or anything you guys are interested in me doing or let me know. Alright, I will see you guys on the next video and talk to you guys soon. Appreciate it.